Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's September 25th, 2018, and this is another episode of Ask Me Anything. Uh, today's topic has to do with wood chips, and those of you who've been watching this channel for a while know that I'm crazy about wood chips. It's one of the ways we've been building uh, slow soil uh, very consistently and fairly rapidly over the last several years. Kate Cortez uh, recently wrote uh, indicating that uh, within within just a, a, a month or two, uh, she had a couple loads of wood chips delivered. The wood chips were oak and comfort trees. She used it on the side of her of her house near in, in, in a low spot, and made some made the depth of the of the uh, of the area that she was creating for a garden two to three feet deep. And she was shocked to see in just just about a month's time that the height of the of the bed that she had created with the wood chips had actually sunk to about one foot. So there was a drastic decrease in the volume or depth of the wood chip pile. And she was wondering, is this solely due to decomposition? Now, I'd say that it is possible, but I don't think it's fairly, very likely at all. I actually believe that it's multifactorial like most things that we see in life. There are multiple factors contributing. The first uh, and ob most obvious factor is the climate, the geographic area that you're, that you're living in. Central Florida is a uh, humid, subtropical uh, region. And we live in central New York in a cold, temperate uh, climate zone. And we have winters and co very, very cold spells. You have lots of rain and warmth uh, for prolonged periods of time. The only place that decomposition happens much more rapidly is truly in the tropics, uh, like in a tropical rainforest. And that's why there's really not much soil uh, debris building up the depth like you see in upstate New York. Uh, that material just breaks down so rapidly and it goes right back up into the uh, upper stories of, of the canopy. Or in places where, it's, where the area has been developed, we get erosion. And, uh, or we get it covered and construction being uh, going on as well. And therefore we go down to the substrates like the sand, uh, sandy materials and all, or limestone. So that's one factor is the climate. And so I would expect that in your area, uh, the decomposition of woody materials would, would happen much more quickly. Kate also mentioned that uh, she noted when the truck uh, delivered, there probably was some steam coming out of it and probably a musty smell, uh, indicating that some of the uh, woody materials or the tree materials were in the truck for um, several days, potentially even more than that. Uh, we have the same thing happen up here. And one thing I would always caution people, if you, if you get a really strong whiff of it, don't get in the back of one of these trucks to clean out the, the debris or hold your breath. Uh, it's not good for you to bring in, to breathe in uh, that, that material when it's first getting dumped or when you're turning it, you don't want to st stand downwind. So, uh, so ultimately, uh, there were fungal uh, elements and uh, microbial communities uh, within that material as it is on all materials, all living materials have uh, microbiomes on the surface of the leaf, on the surface of the bark, and then once they get chipped up the uh, surface area of the, of the material debris that's broken up into particles really becomes colonized. The other thing is that the, and this has to do with climate as well, is there's different socio-microbiological communities in different geographic locations in different climates. So the symbiotic relationship between the bacteria and fungi that are there and the species, um, their, their, their teamwork working together will be different in different locations, just as it is with people who are consuming different diets different, in different geographic locations, uh, different socioeconomic groups, all have different uh, microbial communities within the colon. And that's why nowadays there's actually fecal transplants to help with chronic debilitating disorders in people as well, but that's another issue. Another factor is um, 
the the life stage of the of the tree material that was actually uh, sent through the wood chipper. So if the the material has been dead for for a prolonged period of time, uh, there's no green leafy material on it or pine um, uh, pine needles on on it. There's no seeds there either, and we're left with mostly uh, carbon source. You know, sometimes even the bark has has, uh, has been missing from some of those. So that's that's a tree that's lived its its cycle. It's died for whatever reason, and so it's much it's so it's I don't want to say solely carbon, but it's lost, it's lost a great deal of the nitrogen and other containing components as compared to the, the vast amount of carbon. So, and then we take uh, the time of year that the, uh, that the tree is going through and, and the age. So very, very young trees will have very small calipers and therefore when it's run through a chipper, uh, they're going to uh, have a great deal more nitrogen relative to the amount of carbon. Uh, so that's another component uh, feature. If the leaves are out, like we, if they're deciduous trees that drop their leaves, if these were run through the chipper or processed when they were in full foliage, then we have a much greater nitrogen component re relative to the, to the amount of carbon as well. Uh, and our carbon nitrogen ratio affects the thermophilic, the heat uh, generating um, results from the, uh, the, 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 the social groups of microbes that are colonizing the, the, the woody and green material that's there. I hope this is making sense as I'm going through this. Another factor is the, the, the type of <coughs> and size of sharpness of the blades on the wood chipper that's being used. And I've mentioned before, the, the tree service that delivers the bulk of our wood chips here has a very, very large uh, commercial industrial uh, wood chipper. And this chipper, the space between the blade and the apparatus that, that propels the, uh, the woody material into the blade is pretty wide. So smaller diameter limbs and all, sometimes they'll be three, four feet long. And, or we get chunks of, of materials that are about 12 inches long, or often, you know, three to four inches. And they might be as thick as an inch thick. Whereas the other tree service that we have, and I really love it when, when he comes by, this, his blades are always sharp. He keeps them really sharp because if they don't keep their, sh their blades sharp enough, I should mention this, then their shoot, their exhaust shoot where the wood chips and the woody material comes out of can get more easily plugged. But with those big heavy duty grinding uh, units, uh, they don't get plugged as often because they're just cranking out and they just blow everything out of it so rapidly. Even though the other wood chipper uh, service uh, tree service that comes by has a very good smaller chipper. It still looks like a big professional one when you when you drive by it on the road. The blades are closer to the to the uh, to the driving unit that drives the woody material through it and they're always sharp so I get really small uh, wood chips. The smaller the the um, the surface area of uh, the, the smaller the wood chip the greater the surface area and therefore, the more biological activity and the more rapid that that material will break down if all other components are the same. So the smaller the size of the particles really makes a difference. Another factor to consider is when we're, when we're piling up this material is the size of the particle as well. So uh, when I walk around and all I have to do, I either can look at the woody material that's there and I can tell about how quickly it will consolidate, not necessarily decompose, but compress and consolidate. Um, because the longer the pieces or more oddly shaped the, the, the material is, some small particles, some very long particles and sticks and twigs and all, well, there's a great deal of airspace in between each, each, each of these woody uh, spaces. And that air and the strength initially of the, of the sticks and pieces make the pile appear to be much, much higher because it's, it's, it has a lot of air in it. 
and that really can help out with getting starting the fire in the decomposition process because you really want lots of air in there and although they're decom decomposing at almost the same rate as the smaller particles they will have a rapid uh, uh, consolidation or compression or compaction of the pile relative to the small par particulate matter uh, mainly because that airspace is being displaced as, as, the, as the, the air becomes less, um, uh, as the air is removed from the pile, from the, from the woody material starting to break down, it settles. The other factor is, uh, if this is the low spot on your property, which I believe it is, okay, uh, what ends up happening is, uh, when you have frequent uh, rain events, the woody material that's more buoyant, buoyant initially, when it, when it, uh, before it actually gets fully colonized into the depths of the woody material, I apologize for the wind here. Um, the every time it rains, if it's in a in a low spot, that water fills up inside of there, and all of those particles start to float some, and then they find a more uh, a, a lower spot as as the, the water resides. So every resides. So every time there's a rain event, there's a little bit of a rearrangement of the particles and they'll sort of fit together as opposed to when the pile is just dumped or you shovel it all on there, everything isn't going to resettle and become more evenly meshed and, and lay down. So those are the, are the factors that I think about. I hope I wasn't confusing by uh, describing it this way. Um, and I don't know, I, I, I have shot in a couple of GoPro um, images of some of the chips around, and, but I don't think it's going to show up that well. We did have some rain today, so the area is moist. Uh, recently, I posted a video of me cleaning out the, uh, the chicken coop. Now, another factor that I didn't uh, uh, include thus far because it, it doesn't sound like there's a lot of animals involved in in the pot in the areas that you you place the wood chips but we every year we put about six inches deep of uh, woody material now this the woody material that we placed in to this most recently posted video uh, was the, from the larger uh, uh, tree service the one with the big chunky pieces so I took a lot of the pieces and I and I took them out of the chicken coop but they're pretty good sized chunks anything over oh, six or eight inches or three three inches wide I try to remove out of the coop because the chickens work in there and the ducks are in there as well uh, but I cleaned that that the chicken coop and duck house there about a year ago and nearly all of that material has broken down and hopefully I'll insert here a little bit of footage of me putting my hand into the material that I'm right, so that material that was in the coop I went ahead and placed next to pond 5 which is a pond where we're trying to, to seal with cardboard and paper products there will be a video coming up about that in the near future as well so I put my hand into the material and you can see that it's down there's still some visible wood chips that are there but 90% of it is broken down to, to sediment uh, size materials. It's, it's, it's like very dusty. When I was cleaning out the coop, I had to wear a mask and um, with full facial goggles and all because all this material gets so airborne uh, so quickly. So if you go to take a shovel full, poof, there's a whole big dust storm. Where that isn't, um, that isn't evident or doesn't occur during fresh wood chips being put down. And it doesn't have the musty smell because it's already been broken down. So we have all of the materials being, being constantly being disrupted, being scratched by the chickens and pecked at, uh, consuming the, the small invertebrates that are there. They actually eat some of the fungi that's there as well. And they're depositing their materials. And I, throughout, throughout the season, especially during the winter months, am constantly taking greens in their vegetable material and throwing it down on the floor so the chickens and the ducks can consume that material. So there's constantly more green material being added to the brown material. Uh, so a lot more nitrogen being added to those carbon sources, which even though it's not piled up in a compost pile, it works extremely well. And I have shown in the past uh, when I did composting piles inside of the chicken coop 
and the chickens would work that pile right down. So that would all start out as wood chips and, and, and I'd add some hay or straw to it. The chickens droppings from underneath the, the, uh, the roosts that they'd sit on, the perches. And uh, I'd take that material and mix it all together and that stuff would heat rate right up just like our big composting piles. And, the, and whenever I would pile it up, the chickens would scratch it down, bring it down to ground level. And that would be broken down by, by the next spring. So we can create more rapid um, breakdown, decomposition of these woody materials. But I would in general think of those several factors that I've already mentioned. So I hope this video answered your question adequately. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Uh, if you think this video was informative, please give us a, a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. Hit that bell icon if you want to be notified when we post more videos. And certainly, folks, have a super fantastic day. Bye-bye now.